Well, hi there, YouTubers. Hasta que ya no se siguen seated here after, boy, quite a while. So long, we can practice. We can practically call this Return of the Jedi, except that I'm not much of a Jedi. Um, I guess we can call it Return of the CNC Dude. <laughs> Let me give you a quick uh, a quick update on what's been going on here. Um, you know, most of my videos, practically a year ago, were about making um, lightsaber parts. We were making parts on the lathe and uh, some on the mill. Uh, like... Uh, like the pommel here and then I made the mistake of, uh, or I should say, I wouldn't call it a mistake but basically I went to the Craigslist, found this tremendous deal got a second PCNC 1100 and uh, that pretty much sucked up the next five months there was no way I could uh, get on, the, on uh, do anything else other than clean up the machine, fix the machine and somewhere around in May uh, it got sold, so it was picked up. It was sad to let it go, but uh, there was no way I could keep two machines. It was completely uh, illogical to have two uh, to have two machines. So pretty much the Vulcan in me said, you know what, we want this to sell it. So let's do that. Um, and uh, not like I made uh, enough money, not even to take my family on vacation. But you know, I made a few bucks, and it was it was so much fun to fix the machine and get it to work again. And, you know, it was it was fun. So um, no regrets. I would have loved to have two machines, but there was no reason for it, and there was uh, no. I mean, I really don't have a lot of space here, and that takes part of the next five months, May May through October. Uh, so when I sold the machine, I was like, man, it's great to have more space again, but I really have to solve this ridiculous nonsense that I am stuck on a two-car garage with so much equipment, and I'm always, you know, trampling on, on my stuff. I really need to move to a place with a workshop, like a real workshop. Uh, so by the way, my wife is always complaining that she cannot park the car on, uh, on the garage, so it's like... Why do we have a garage where we cannot store cars? <clears throat> so, and I, and I could talk about that for hours, but uh, I'm not going to go there today. So basically I said, you know what, it's time to go to a house with a workshop. And I started moving, except that I haven't moved. So on May 2015, I started packing everything on my house because I was certain we were going to move. But uh, as of today, it hasn't happened. And to be honest, I'm thinking it's not going to happen. Because uh, prices of uh, houses here in Texas have gone up ridiculously. So it's getting tough to find a house with a workshop that my wife likes. It's, it, it, I, I don't think it's going to happen, to be honest. But if it happens, great. Anyway, assuming five months later... I am here, uh, still here in the two-car garage, so what I'm doing is trying to get rid of, of stuff as much as possible. I've been to the auction place to just discard items. I've been giving away stuff uh, to friends from the uh, Dallas Makerspace or the Robotics Group or the Machine Shop Group and, uh, and, any, and anybody else who shows up. You know, old metals, uh, different trinkets, gadgets that I have been piling up for too long. So trying to downsize because I'm gonna try to survive on this two car garage because it's all I've got, unfortunately. But that takes me, basically I'm done with the packing. There's nothing else to pack, everything is packed. Uh, and I'm not joking here, like everything except the garage is packed. And I have like two computers upstairs, but that's gonna be packed soon. I'm gonna pack everything so when the time comes, if it comes, I'm ready. Uh, that tells you how much I need the stuff that I put on those boxes. But actually I do. Every now and then it's like, man, that stuff is on the boxes. Ah oh, crap, that stuff is on the boxes. But uh, moving on. So it's today's November 1st. In less than two months, the Star Wars trilogy uh, I should say the Star Wars saga because it's not, not even longer a, a trilogy, it's more like a, 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 a sextology, it does a number. Uh, 
it continues. So the Star Wars saga continues, and boy, I don't, I, I guess Star Wars has always been uh, a good topic for me to work with. Uh, when I was working with the R2D2, I had a lot of uh, emails, people were talking, asking about the R2D2, and with the lightsabers, it's been the same. A lot of people asking and uh, wanting to know about the lightsabers. So since there is going to be more Star Wars to come, and we can see that in the stores and in the ads, commercials, um, I, I just want to continue with this. So today we're going to talk about the uh, circuit box. This is probably, this is truly the most complex part of the whole thing. Uh, because it, you basically have to, you know what, let's take a look. Okay, um, so let me show you here the first prototype I made and uh, the the circuit box is pretty much unfinished. It's, it's, boy, it's not only embarrassing and disgusting, but it's really depressing. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of work to be made. And you know, back then when I made this, this was probably 10 years ago. Well, actually, it was more than 10 years ago. It's either 11 or 12 years ago. I didn't have the equipment to show you what I'm showing you now. So I redesigned the circuit box completely, and my goal is to have the one with the switch and uh, the two LEDs in arrow, uh, you know, like a red arrow and a, uh, a green arrow. And then like two switches in here. By the way, I gotta I gotta give credit to who deserves credit here. I've been utilizing uh, the guy's web web pages. Uh, I'm gonna put the name here. It's lothfurnace.com. Wow, this is if if you if you go and check out his work, it is just mesmerizing and brutally amazing. It's just gorgeous work. So I have been utilizing his pages for inspiration and the results, and I imagine what I'm going to show you is very similar to what he's been doing, but uh, the results are a way better, better box. And one last detail, which I am going to get from a different source. I was looking at a, at a replica from, I believe it was SD Studios on eBay. And that's, that's what I'm gonna try to emulate at the end. But anyway, how does this work? Oh, actually, let me go back to why I was saying this is probably the most convoluted part. But I'm just gonna mix that in in the explanation. Let me tell you how this works. So the first one that I did, I started with a big block of aluminum that I had, and basically that kind of material. And you know, I started just milling around and this can tell you right here, one of the problems with this part is that we have to touch every single face of the material. Um, and you're saying, well, duh, don't we have to do that with, um, with every part that we make? Well, not always, and maybe not so much. But I'll, I'll, as I'll show you here, it, it gets, it gets uh, harder and harder every time. But the biggest problem is this radius here because you really don't want to make it uh, by 3D, 3D routing. I don't think, I, I think it's just gonna take too long. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. Basically, I just grab my part like this on the vise and I have a mill that comes like this. Uh, let, me, let me grab the mill. So I'm gonna show you two aspects of this. Uh, this is a roughing mill. I'm not saying this is the one I use uh, for this cut. This is a, uh, like, I think they call serrated roughing mills, uh, roughing end mills. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was the, the diameter, which is half an inch. So this thing will come through here and cut, you know, in steps like this. The problem, as you can see, is that we are applying pressure to the part in all of directions, so it becomes super duper critical how we design this. The I'm talking about feeds uh, and different rates of, of which you're removing material. So the amount of chatter here was brutal, and uh, I didn't like it. I actually had to stop it. 
I don't know if you can see the amount of chatter. Of course, you could hear it. And uh, it's very possible this is because I'm not an expert on feeds, feed speeds, and rates. So maybe a super duper awesome machinist out there would have been able to do this with no problem. But in my case, as I was doing this, I realized, man, this is just too much material removal here, especially on this portion. It's just too much material removal. I gotta, I gotta do something easier. And what I did was, I looked online and I found that there is a, a piece of stock which is practically the size. It's just a few thousands of an inch more. I think it's like 10 and 20 on one side. Uh, like 20, like 20 on this side and like 10 on this side. So I decided if I do this, all I have to do now is remove way less material than if I do something like this. By the way, removing material from here and from here is not as bad as removing material from here because in here the end mill is only getting, it's only finding aluminum halfway, right? It's only one side it, only one side is finding material, but in here both sides are cutting material uh, And I'm certain it can be done. It just that gets trickier versus in this in this side You're just you're just removing uh, a very small amount of material. So you can go faster uh, and more aggressive and the result is this guy as you can see there is um, Basically our profile let me, let me talk about this part again here, now that I have it outside. Uh, so this is a radius and it has to have the radius of the hilt, which is basically this. And this looks perfect. I, I look at this from this angle, actually, let me see if I can show you the angle. There is no gap. That's, that's the beauty of CNC. Um, by the way, you could have done this with a boarding bar, but <laughs> man, finding that radius would have been horrendously hard well i i guess not horrendously hard but i don't know it was so easy with cnc uh, i just programmed the profile and it went so in this case what i decided was to make it even easier was to use a thick a thick end mill and this is uh is this three eighths i'm sorry five eighths in any case or actually this i think this is 750 thousand so three quarters three quarters and why that that helps is because now you have a, a, a much sturdier sturdier end mill uh, removing material but why do you want a sturdier end mill removing material in this case well look at the length of this thing it's it's freaking insane and you have to put you have to put this piece on the device you're gonna have an end mill going through it for practically two inches so the stick out what is called the stick out is preposterous that means that this tool is going to deflect as you're cutting because it's just it just needs to be out so much so if you do this with a half an inch end mill this guy is going to be getting forces and it's going to bend and you're going to be seeing i'm certain you're thinking bend the Emil, are you crazy? How the hell are you going to bend uh, such a hard piece of steel? Well, it will bend. Everything on this planet bends. Everything on the universe bends. The question is, how much does it bend? Well, in here we can see it. If you look at these groups uh, on this side, they are caused because when the when the tool was going on uh, on one pass it was at an angle and then when it went to the other one it was at a different angle because of the deflection so there you go deflection is real even on ridiculously strong pieces of metal but anyway the other thing that i wanted to say about this group here is that you really don't want to 3D cut this like you know if you have a imagine this is a ball end mill and you're going like this um, man to draw this profile with 3D would be ridiculously lengthy 
which is why I made this part with the piece of aluminum standing up and the end mill coming around doing the profile which is why this is super duper tricky and most likely you're doing a few things that are not okay for example this uh, this piece on, on the vise is being graphed from here so you have way longer material outside than inside so obviously the part is also going to <clears throat> chatter it, it's just it's just not easy to make this right um, now I could put a longer piece but that means that then I have to discard a longer piece of aluminum so there that's the trade-off either just you grab this much better by putting more material or a better some kind of a, a, a grabbing a better grabbing system or you live with the chatter and the and the finishing and then you can sand it out sand it off or whatever but what i want to the idea that i want to sell is that because i have features on all of these sides which is what i was saying before that this is one of the this is truly the most intricate part of the whole uh, lightsaber because you have to machine every single side. Um, <clears throat> and because of that, the easiest is to grab it from the bottom and do the profile around. And that way you get your, your, your radius and your surfaces. By the way, here is a, a blemish. And I think the reason here was that the end mill wasn't long enough. So this was actually cut <clears throat> with uh well actually it wasn't cut it was basically uh harassed by you know basically this portion of the mill so as i was cutting down here this part of the mill uh the friction generated this guy that's why i wanted something that i could reach but notice that because this guy has a bigger radius on the cutter than on the on the shaft what do we call this um i'm gonna call it chaff i know it's not a chaff but uh, i forgot the word now but because this guy is a thinner diameter smaller diameter it doesn't it doesn't mar it doesn't screw my part here so that's another trick that you can learn from this one now after this of course there's still plenty of stuff to do i mean this uh notice that there is a radius here as well and that radius is not part of the design the reason is that um obviously the end mill is round we don't have a lightsaber end mill here otherwise this would have been perfectly square but the end mill is round so all like all you can do with this kind of cut is a round cuts of course and that's why then you have to come in and cut it so my next step was to we can see here so now you come with the with the end mill like this and you do this the slotting basically it's like a slotting and then you can do your pocket and your hole and eventually you finish with with everything So obviously this looks way better than this and you can actually put circuits in here all I'm lacking now is the cavity on this side for the switches and in here for the LEDs the LEDs are gonna be particularly tricky because they are uh, triangles so how do you cut triangles with an end mill uh, obviously you can't so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make holes and then unfortunately by hand I'm gonna have to file the triangles in but uh, I imagine the reason why they use triangles and not something like I don't know squares other than the fact that they look amazingly cool I think the reason was also that you can file them with a triangle of file that that shouldn't be hard at all there's there has been plenty of triangle of triangular files for a long time so this is the progress 
that I have to share today. As you can see, I made a bunch. I have uh, like five, five of these. And the reason why I made so much is because I wanted to show the different steps. Like you start with that guy, you end up with this, then you go here, here, and then at some point in time, I'll have the one with the, uh, with the LEDs. Now, as I mentioned a little while ago, I am planning on copying an idea that I, not only I have, I think I have seen this idea on different re real replica pictures, but also from, uh, from the uh, eBay page that I was talking about. So what they did was, instead of drilling the LED cavities directly to the part, they mill a rectangle in here and then they put like a little face plate with the LEDs and you can see two screws. Um, that, you may argue that that is not as elegant as doing it on a solid piece of aluminum. But you know, sometimes you actually want to see screws and cuts and more parts. It just makes it look more complex. And we're, we're dealing here with a lightsaber. So I think, although it would be considered a hushbox of parts, some kind of a clutter way of making a machine, to me, it looks cooler. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mill a, a pocket here and do the face play thing. And of course, after that, then I have to work on the part that goes here. But as you can see, I have never done that. I never came to finish this part, which would have been an easy as just getting some copper or brass or bronze. I don't know which one it is. <clears throat> or, you know, it, it can be painted like this is not real. This color is not real, as you can see, it's already peeling from all of the aging, but this is just painted. Uh, but yeah, that's part that I've never finished in here. All right, so that's the circuit box uh, as it is today. I can tell you now that this is going to take another break, unfortunately, because I am going to start working on another project that I have to finish before the movie. It is Star Wars related and all I'm gonna say today is that you're gonna love it. If you have loved the if you if you have loved the lightsaber videos you will have orgasms with the one that I'm gonna show you next. That's all I'm gonna say so my apologies for setting so much expectation but i am positive next topic is gonna be awesome and then we'll finish the lightsabers hey if i if if i have taken a whole year just to do this dinky little part it shouldn't be amazing if i'm gonna have to wait another 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 bunch of months to actually finish it but we're getting closer and it's looking very nice and i could not have done it without the power of cnc all right uh, I truly thank you for watching my my videos and subscribing in the in the last year that I have been mostly not here <laughs> because I have been too busy doing something else. I just say the last the last five months because there were videos with the uh, with the second PC in C eleven hundred, but uh, the last five months when I was moving and it was just too hot to be here in the garage, man. Uh, uh, I think I got at least 70 to 80 new subscribers. So I'm super happy, super thrilled to see that these videos actually uh, are uh, are good to the community and that people are uh, hopefully learning something even when, I'm, when I am not a real machinist. But uh, I think uh, these are obviously a lot of fun topics that many people like. So. Thank you for subscribing and uh, feel free to hit the like button if you like this stuff. And comment, I welcome comments. I like finding comments whenever uh, I wake up and uh, I see that somebody uh, has a question or something. So feel free to comment and we'll, we'll continue with this uh, Star Wars saga. Pretty much everything is Star Wars nowadays. So uh, rest assured that on my CNC Dude YouTube channel, uh, pretty much everything is going to be Star Wars for a long time to come. All right. Hey, take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.